Hi there. Welcome back to our channel. We really appreciate you guys watching our videos. Today's video is going to be about one of the crops that we truly enjoy growing. It's one of our staples. And you'll notice that we've got a playlist called our staples. There may not be much there yet, but there will be plenty by the time we get through with this gardening season. But the one thing that we tend to truly enjoy growing is the Detroit dark red beets. And my favorite way to eat them is to pickle them. And it is a sweet, and that come off the shelf, so it had a little dust. Let me knock that dust off there. That is sweet beets. We canned these last year. And I've only got four pints left. So that should carry me through until the new crop for 2021 comes in. And you're going to see how I started those seeds for our 2021 garden in today's video. Again, we hope you'll subscribe to our channel and let others know about us. And I sincerely hope that you guys will try to inspire others to garden. I'm going to issue a challenge on our Facebook page. And I've never done that before, but I'm going to try it. I'd like for everybody that has access to Netflix to watch a program called Kiss the Ground. And I realize that when someone is doing a documentary, sometimes things are, are a little overstated, but this is, a, is something that's very, very dear to our hearts. I watched it, didn't realize what I was watching. I enjoyed the documentary so much that I sat there and watched it a second time to make sure I hadn't missed anything, that I understood what they were saying. And a lot of the things that they're doing, I see people like Justin Rhodes, a YouTuber, is already practicing that. He moves his cattle from place to place. This winter, he put them underneath his barn and kept putting straw over the manure simply so that he could have a good compost something that's not chemical. And I didn't realize until I watched this video that there's actually machinery out there for large commercial farmers that can raise their crops no-till. Yeah, no-till. If you watch that program, it talks about how people like us are really, really making an impact on global climate change. That's all I'm going to tell you. You're going to have to watch the program to understand what I'm talking about. All right, let's get on with today's video. And as I said before, we sincerely appreciate you guys watching our videos. These seeds came from the seed guy. And they're Detroit dark red beets. And I'm going to put at least a couple seeds in each of these cells. And it looks like I may get three in some of them. But just, I'm going to multi sow them just like Charles Dowding does. I tried that last year for the first time and it worked really great for us. Uh, I ended up with a lot of beets to roast, chip up for salads, and my favorite way to eat beets is pickled beets. I'm one of these guys that loves to can sweet pickled beets with cloves in the mixture. It goes so well when you have a great big pot of pinto beans. I just love it. So, got to have more beets this year because I've used, I think I might have two little pints of pickled beets left. And what we can make, for some reason, I guess it's because we're using family recipes and they're just using whatever works best for them as far as canning the beets. But uh, there's no comparison between home canned 
and what you buy at the grocery store. I know that each beet seed has multiple seed heads in it itself. Uh, that's why it has that odd little look if you've never seen them before. There can be several seeds in the little pod. And I'm going to call it a pod because I know there's more than one seed there in the little pod. So, And I do like the Detroit Red Bead. It is... It is an heirloom, an older variety, and uh, just in grow, enjoy growing it. <laughs> Not only do I enjoy growing it, I just love to eat it. So, it's going quite well. I'm going to have 72 plants. That's what I, or I'll have more than plants than that. I'm going to have 72 cells multi-sown, and that's exactly what I put in the garden last year was the 72 cells. And it worked out very well for us. Let's just hope that we're as lucky this year. I have noticed that sometimes we have something that does better in one year than it does the other. That's just Mother Nature kicking in. And not kicking our butts, but just kicking in. These could have actually have already been planted in the ground because they are frost tolerant. But we do things as we can. As I keep telling everybody, life just happens. Don't sweat it. I've got quite a bit in my garden for it to be the 16th day of April already. Just a few more seeds and then I'll put the rest of these back for now. <laughs> Those flew out of my finger and overpopulated that one, but hey, that's fine. All right, now I'm going to take my finger and gently push those down into the soil. And then I'm going to cover them with more soil. A lot of people buy those plastic trays with the big covers. And that's to hold the moisture in. This is a little lot more aggravating, I'll have to admit, but that's because this stuff wants to fold back on itself. But all you really need is just a small piece of cling wrap, like that right there, laying right over top of your plant. Now you might say, well, what's that going to do? Well, that's going to hold the moisture in. I'm not going to have to run out here just every little whip stitch to water these seedlings. I have a lot inside on my plant stations right now, but this is some Swiss char bright lights. And I was a little disappointed because only a few came up at first. But I am beginning to see just, and I am beginning to see just a few more seeds breaking the ground. I did not like, because I paid a lot for that. Perhaps it's something I did. But the germination on these was, was not up to my expectations, and that's putting it lightly. Now this is the Detroit Red Beet Seeds, and they're already starting to put out their new leaves. They could go out. I do need to get a spot worked up for them and get them moved out. The germination on those was terrific, and those came from the seed guy. All right, let's do a little bit of an update here on my rolling greenhouses. Here we have in this pot somewhat the old timers call moss roses. And there's lots of little plants coming up. 
Oh, and I actually see, I'm happy to see that, I'm actually seeing several of per the purslane come up as well. I knew there was purslane as well as the moss roses in this pot. My grandpa had a old house that he hand built and he had concrete blocks around his front porch that came up about halfway and then the post sat there and held the roof. It's the craftsman style. And he raised moss roses and he never replanted them. He would fertilize his, put some fertilizer on his plants when they came up, but he never, ever had to replant them. They just reseeded themselves every year. And this is my peppers. I've lost a few. But the ones that I have are looking okay, considering the weather. My tomatoes are getting way too big. They're ready to be repotted, and here's some more peppers. And these little plants here are jade trees. They are so easy to start. And they've been in the garage, the detached garage, all winter until I put them out here. I blistered them, but as you can see, I pulled the blistered uh, leaves off of them. Well, maybe not all of them, but don't take me just a second to pinch a few more off. And they're coming out just perfect. Now these will be sitting beside our sidewalk down in a uh, drain on top of blocks. And it really makes for a beautiful landscape. This is my sunrise bumblebee. And Pam can grow some of the biggest gladiola bulbs I've ever seen. She gave me those because she was thinning them. And still, no sweet potatoes. The ones in the jars are doing fine. And yes, life keeps happening and I still have onions left to set out. And the heat has caused the cilantro to start blooming. So it's gone from cilantro and now we'll save some seeds for coriander. Yes. The seeds on cilantro is what you buy at the store as coriander. It's typically ground, which I have no problem grinding it. As I said earlier, it is raining today. Rain's lit up a little bit, but we're supposed to have more this afternoon. So I had these marigolds, and this one, of course, is Cracker Jack. That's the large one, and it was different colors. Hopefully the Eskimo white marigold will repel insects just as well. And of course these are some for pollinators. I've got some zinnias which we love to grow. And this twizzle I've never grown but it, it can actually become a perennial in our area. Might have to mulch it a little bit. The plants will actually make a small tuber in the ground. And this was marigold dwarf. Boloro, I may be pronouncing that wrong. And down here, I have Boston pickling cucumbers. I have a whole flat of those, and I will be sharing those with my family. And then I've got some straight neck squash and some crook neck squash, as well as quite a bit of cosmos there. And this is more of the marigolds. This is the champion mix. mix. I bought every one that I could find that was different. Uh, I brought these in because I didn't want these to flood in the rain and the seeds to float to the top of my soil. So I figured it was best to set them here on the picnic table. And believe it or not, I washed this day before yesterday. And we've had that much pollen fall in one day's time. but. It's easy to bring the water hose around here and take a cloth and just rinse this thing off. We brought out our old furniture. Uh, we bought this furniture actually when we built this sunroom. That was a porch and we made a sunroom out of it. But the only problem with it, we're having to have some special made cushions because cushions are no longer built this size. It's almost like it's a planned obsolescence, but we'll make do. We'll have some special made, and I'll show it to you. 
And of course our pavilion is finished. That is the heat vent. Uh, all of the heat will rise and go out that vent, hopefully. So far it's worked perfect. I'm well pleased with it. We have the grill down here below where we can grill. And there's quite a distance up there. And thus far we've not had any problem with smoke. I'm waiting for the guttering guys. They're supposed to be here tomorrow. I'm not sure they will show. But if they do show, they'll get the guttering started. And of course, let me walk over here where I can flip back up to the top. And as you can see, and that thing at the top is the vent. That's where, the, where all the heat comes out. And we're going to have guttering put around this. That's a metal roof. And the guttering, I want one to come down here on this post just like that little drip thing comes down there and I want one over there on the far post I want to put a water storage system under here there's about five foot of space where you can walk under this because we are up above ground level and it is covered on the bottom and I just want to have a water catching system where I can have and store water myself for my plants. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. And as always, we are a growing channel, but we're growing because people like you let others know about our channel. So if you get a chance, share a link to one of our videos on your social media site and let people know. Or go to our Facebook page. Our Facebook page, there is a link on our channel to it, and it is under the same name, Tennessee Mountain Garden. I do try to post there at least something every day. And you would be able to share links from there because that is a public page. Again, we appreciate you. We hope you have a truly blessed life. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.